The year is 1868. Jacob C. Hadley Textiles was to decide on a town in which to expand their textile production to the western part of the United States. Centerville and its rival, Thompson, were the two feasible locations for building the new factory, which would not only provide over a thousand new jobs, but would call for a central railhead to accommodate the factory. Jacob Hadley, a wealthy business tycoon, sent his somewhat prodigal son Alexander to decide on a construction location. All things considered, Centerville was the most logical spot to build the gigantic factory. The relatively flat terrain made it advantageous for the railroad to lay track, for in order to build to Thompson, the railroad would have to negotiate a meandering river and several scenic valleys and hills. On his trek to visit the two towns, Alex is thrown from his horse, is knocked unconscious, and suffers a concussion. He is discovered by a beautiful young lady, Jeanette Thompson, who takes him to her home where she and her father, the founder of Thompson, live, and nurses him back to health. Alex falls in love with Jeanette and the beautiful landscape of the Thompson area. As would be, Alex chooses Thompson for the construction site. Jacob Hadley is disappointed that his son made such an illogical choice and vetoes Alex's decision. Alex then disowns his father and marries Jeanette and builds a beautiful house on a hillside overlooking Thompson. Alex's occupation is a farmer. The couple has one child which died at birth along with the mother Jeanette. Thompson is now a ghost town with one house still standing. with the plastic art. Are some of you not sure why you are sitting here in this theater looking into our dimension? Jeanette, I, I seem to sense that there are a few people in the theater who are skeptical of being here. Now, now I feel that there are some who are doubting the validity of going to a university. Why, why some even doubt the validity of even, even being. Yes, Alex, I can sense that too. I also sense that those who have been termed intellectuals are now rationalizing that their existence in this theater, and even in the world, is to increase the cognitive growth, to persist in the raping of the truth. <laughs> Alex, show respect to those who seek escape from life through the medium of a flaw in their visual perception. I'm sorry, Jeanette, but when you mentioned truth, I couldn't help myself. Oh, let me explain the joke to our guests. Not necessary, Alex. On a spectrum of infinity, flicker buffs will laugh all too soon. And the stone walls of their crypt crumbles to sand, and they are left standing naked, scorched by the light of infinity. Then they will see the joke. People, please don't be frightened by these words. Your laughter will be pleasant and uninhibited. You will not be ashamed to be naked, and a scorching light will warm and comfort that of your left standing. Jeanette and I would like to invite you to leave the theater. You should mention time wisely. 
In Thompson, there is one house standing. Among others that have fallen. Our house. We loved. So leave the theater. Live real. Love real. Projectionist, stop real.